Pokemon. Great timing. We got a lot of letters in the mailbox, and I just finished sorting them into four groups. Nice work. Well, the real work hasn't even started yet. Hmm. Which batch of letters should we read through first? Let me quickly summarize what we found out about a flower that is not of this world. Tainari believes that on closer examination, it might be logically paradoxal, while Albedo says that his answer would be better discussed at length in person. As for my answer, I think a clock in the shape of a flower would constitute one that is not of this world. Here's what we've gathered regarding a guide who will never get lost. Mona said that she'd like to join us in uncovering the secret behind the prophecy. While Bennett suggests Fischl, Mona, or the Traveler as potential candidates. Mika didn't submit much, but he did draw a vegetation map for Master Tainari, and wrote up a dragon spotting calendar for Sino. Amber also wrote in. She said that she sees herself as nobody's guide, but everybody's friend. As for one who would never lie, Rosaria removed herself from consideration, but both Razor and Sino are willing to support us in our search. Timaeus seems to have forgotten to write to us. And finally, this is what we've gathered on a legend that never ends. Glee said that her mom has a number of friends who like to write storybooks. Lisa believes that legends live forever in people's hearts. I think that for a legend to be never-ending, it has to be filled with hopes and dreams and actively pass from one person to the next. So, what are the answers to the four riddles then? Uh, you're really smart, Paimon. I bet you can figure it all out in no time. Or, let's all share our thoughts on what we think the answers might be. But wait! Wait for me! Oh, Timaeus! What brings you here? I'm sorry, I really am. The time just got away from me and I didn't get around to writing that letter. However, I'm happy to announce that I think I can be the one who would never lie. Huh? This is kind of sudden. Not that we don't trust you, Timaeus, but, um, could you elaborate a little after you catch your breath? Uh, of course, of course. <sighs> Do you still remember the time I, uh, um, <clears throat> collaborated with a certain Miss Ying R? Well, basically, she helped me out a lot with my research into potion making once, and, well, we've stayed in touch through letters ever since. Wait, so Ying R is the girl from Leela that Sucros mentioned earlier? We always assumed you were hard at work every time we saw you at the crafting bench. So you've just been writing letters to Ying R the whole time? Uh, no, I mean, not all the time. I've done some work too. A and anyway, our correspondence covers a lot of serious topics, like perfumes, potions, alchemy. Anyway, a few months ago, I made a vow to the heavens that I will be true to myself and never utter an insincere word until the day that I've managed to win Miss Ying R's heart. So, at Star Snatch Cliff, you were picking Cecilia's as a gift for Ying R? Well, that's right. The Cecilia flower is said to represent a once wayward heart transformed by the power of love. I couldn't think of a better flower to give than that. I know full well that Miss Ying R is far more knowledgeable than I in both the ways of the world and the ways of our craft, but I thought I should make the effort for once and put myself out there. <clears throat> Which brings me to the subject of the last few days and the Windbloom Festival. I thought it was time for me to invite Miss Ying R to Mondstadt, but yesterday Albedo told me that Sucrose has been working hard to help another girl achieve her dream. <gasps> and when I went to take a look at our roster, I saw that she'd done my remaining work for me. I feel incredibly guilty. I've been spending all of my time in my own fantasy world while everyone else has been bending over backwards to help other people. How could I ever hope to be worthy of Miss Ying R's love if I'm so selfish? Oh, Timaeus. And that's why I've decided to join you. But then what about Yingar? Yeah, haven't you been planning this for over a month now? 
You said you were gonna invite her to Mondstadt. Uh, well, yes. I, I did mention in my letters that I'd like her to visit, which is why I just sent her another gift with my hand-picked wind blooms, along with a handwritten letter. I explained that a matter of great importance has presented itself, to which I must devote my full attention for the time being. As soon as it's resolved, I'll make haste to Liyue to pick her up in person. I made sure to package the gift and letter with the greatest care. All I can do now is hope that she'll understand. Point being, please know that I sincerely want to support you in this endeavor. Plus, I think I'm an honest person. As far as I recall, I don't think I've told a single lie in my life. Well, you certainly convinced Paimon with that speech. Don't worry, Timaeus. We won't let your determination go to waste. Thank you, Timaeus. Ah, oh, thank you, everyone. I promise to do everything I can to help. Okay, so it looks like we found our one who would never lie. Great! Let's keep it up! On to the other three! Okay, Paimon will do the honors. Ahem. We have with us here the flower, the guide, the legend, and Timaeus. Huh? Why did you only say Timaeus's name? You should say my name, too. All right, all right. We also have Klee. That's me! <laughs> With Klee here, this all somehow feels like we're getting ready for a field trip. There's nothing wrong with a more relaxed atmosphere, is there? Of course. We will soon see if my hypothesis has any merit. Actually, I'm still feeling a little nervous. Me too. But weren't you all fired up just a moment ago? Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Actually, I'm a little worried too. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. I know what you're feeling. Saying anything becomes so much harder when there are so many people watching. Well, does anyone know the exact location of where we're headed, or should I do a reading on my scry glass? Hmm. According to the prophecy, once we've figured out the answer, we should test it at the Lantern of Utmost Joy. Wait, but where is this lantern? Oh, we know something about that. What? Wow, that's amazing. You really know how to do everything under the sun. Then we'll let you lead the way. This is it! We're off to find the sacred location of the Lantern of Utmost Joy! <laughs> 